Thess First Thessalonians chapter 4, and of course we've read this before, but First Thessalonians chapter 4, um, again, sort of reiterates what we have read thus far. I must have, um, <laughs> I must have wasted some, some tea or something on these pages, but they just don't want, they don't want to come apart. First Thessalonians chapter four and uh, verse sixteen says says what for the ain for the I'm sorry for the Lord the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with a voice of an archangel so, so, this, so there's that angel right uh, we don't know if it's the same angel right but this is an archangel. With a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right? So, remember, Paul is talking about the voice of the angel, and we know that God has command over the angels that are still worshiping him, right? Still in heaven with him. Uh, when else do we see that? Well, I think we just saw it. I'm sorry, in um, verse four, or chapter 14 of Revelation, we see it again in... Um, well, we just read it in nine and ten, and we see we see will be, right? So that's future. Will be those people who receive the mark, worship the beast, and his image. It says what shall same shall drink of the wine, but it's talking about a future tense. When they've received, when they deny, and if so, then the antichrist must be on the earth prior to the wrath, as we mentioned at the top of the podcast, because we certainly know that uh, the the spirit of the antichrist is here. But again, the person of the antichrist must be at, the, at this point that the scriptures are speaking of. He must be. He must be present. For people to worship him, take his mark, right? Uh, worship, as we read in the other scripture, worship his number. But to take his mark in their forehead or their hand, worship the beast and his image. And his mark, we know, the 666 or some other mark that he uses, uh, just like Caesar marked his coins, right? So we talked about the mark uh, perhaps even being a... Um, uh, uh, the word kerygma is talking about a, an actual coin or a graven image on on a coin or something similar, right? You know, like these, uh, like uh, in the military, they have a lot of people. They they say you can you, you coin, right? When you receive a coin that maybe a, a general or somebody is giving you, and it, you know, pat you pass it down, a captain or somebody gives you, you're you're receiving that. It's got a it's got an engravement on it usually says something about the name and who it belongs to well just like caesar his face was on it when jesus said to him you know who do you see on that coin right it's not my face not my name give to caesar what belongs to caesar right so if you take this mark then you're taking you know you're taking that accepting that from the beast but you got to know him first the mark and the image you can't work. You can't really worship the image of something unless you uh, unless you know what it is, unless you see what it is. And a lot of people know and see all this occult and demonic stuff. They know and see it, and they just playing around with it. They know it's occult. They know it's demonic. And some of them that just draws them to it. They hear about witches, you know, and they know they're witches, Wiccans, this and that and the other. They know it is. They tell you they are. And people still play around with them. Right? So that's a knowing decision. Therefore, you receive the knowing judgment. Amen? So we, I think, have covered that clearly enough now. Therefore, after this angel is speaking, that's why, um, the, that, that's why we know the entire seven years right, is not the wrath. We, again, I'll stress this to you again. 
the entire seven years, that last week of Daniel's 70-week prophecy, right, the seven years, is the total seven years is not the wrath. The wrath is only occurring somewhere right after that sixth seal and the seventh seal, right, somewhere in between there when the rapture happens, and then, right, and then the trumpets blow, which opens up the wrath on in full strength. And now we can see here uh, that we just read that there's a there's a there's a progression: first, second, and third, right? So then, also, you know, the Lord has clearly stated in uh, I think we just read it in Revelation six. I'm going to wind up now uh, in Revelation six. And 16, I believe we just read. Um, yeah, we just read. For the great day of the wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Right? The great day of the wrath is come. Revelation 14 said that hour. Right? And this is why. The Lord God, Jesus, said in Matthew 24, no one will know the day or the hour. Because no one will know that great day, right? No one, won't, no one will know that hour. And so, so many people have misinterpreted that scripture. No one will know that precise day, that precise hour. But clearly he has given us indications both in Matthew 24 and in Revelation and many other places, Zechariah, Daniel, etc., Ezekiel, that have helped us to know that certain things are going to be coming, occurring, events are going to be happening prior to that time. We just read it in Revelation 6. And I think before, if you were with us, you know that Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 6 through 11, we said this before, uh, uh, is the equivalent reading of Revelation chapters 13 through 15, verse 5. They're exactly, pretty much the same, exactly the same, same events, because what they are is two visions of the same events. So I think I've also said this before that a, a, right about that six seal or simultaneously, right? Because because God can do all those things at once and more. Uh, it's that, that somewhere at that six seal, somewhere at that seven seal, when the, the silence is when we're raptured. And that I hope under, now you have the understanding that for those people who are remaining on the earth, Right. Remember, it, it it clearly stated that those who come through the great tribulation, the great tribulation, right, that wrath portion, who have repented, can also get their robes. Right. We just read it. So I hope this Bible study has been a blessing to you. I hope that uh, the image and the pictures are becoming clearer uh, for you. Um, I don't know what just happened on the, if you're in the chat room, uh, I think I inadvertently typed the number one or something, and so a lot of ones have appeared. It was, it is not a message from me. However, <laughs> we know that there is only one God, right? So, uh, and if, and if you're a mathematician, you know that you can have the number one repeating, right? So, <laughs> I don't know why they just showed up. Nevertheless, it was it was accidental. Uh, no, no, no other message intended. But I hope this this Bible study has been a blessing to you. I hope that you've been able to understand and receive the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to uh, submit them to the email address as I've given out before. And um, it's been a pleasure studying with you today. I enjoyed. Our, enjoy our time together, and I pray that our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, is with you, that he keeps you, and that he makes his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Until next time, Shalom.